Hello RC Model Reviews viewers, just a very brief video here because partly I want to check and see how well this new camera handles close-ups but what I've got here is a Hobby King Ubeck. Now I bought this uh, for use with the backpacks, the FPV backpacks. This one doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find out what's wrong with it and just do a little bit of fault finding, take you along for the ride. Now um, at the moment it's not turned on. You see here's my power supply over here I'll, and we've got just a very small 0.27 volts. That's just noise pickup on the on the multimeter here, which is connected to the output of the Ubec. On the, on the input, we have my power supply. Now I'm just going to turn on the power supply. We should get 12 volts. There we go, 12.1 volts, and it's 0.05 amps, 50 milliamps. So you'd expect something to be coming out, but there's nothing else. This hasn't changed. It's pretty much the same. So the UBEC is drawing a small amount of current, but it's not putting any voltage out. There should be 5 volts on this meter right now, but there isn't. So what I'm going to do is have a look and see if I can find out why that is. And this will also be a very good test of the camera under low light conditions, because all I've got here is my little desk lamp. And I'm going to have a look now. I'll disconnect the output now, because I'm not interested in that. I'll disconnect the input, so we'll just have a look at the UBEC. And what I've actually done already is I have taken off the heat shrink. Now you see that this uh, comes in black heat shrink and I've split the heat shrink now and so we can get a look at what's actually inside this thing. Let's test the focusing out. There we go. So we get a little thing wrapped in aluminum foil or aluminium foil if you're in America and it's actually two boards. You can see if I hold it up the right way you can see right through the middle of it hopefully. Where are we? That way. So, oh, it's hard from the side of the camera. There we go. You can see right through the middle of it and what I'm picking based on the symptoms I've just seen is it's actually drawing current so therefore this side of the circuit must be okay there's voltage getting into the device it's drawing a small amount of current but there's nothing coming out here and because you've got that 0 0.25, 0 0.27 volts of random noise voltage out here I'm picking that there's actually a break in the wire somewhere between here and there or on that board I'm, I'm picking that one of these wires isn't connected right through to the circuit board so let's take our meter and put it on continuity and see what we get. Now the easiest way is going to be to check out the negative lead first. So I'll just put this on the negative and the negative goes through to this part of the board. We should get a beep if there's some continuity. Oops, it's a bit hard to do this with one hand isn't it? Should be a bit of beep if we get continuity. There you go, you can probably hear that. Now I'll go on the other side of the circuit is the positive. No. That little beep we heard was just a capacitor charging up in there. But now there's no continuity from there to the positive wire. So I'm picking that this wire is broken. Here is the a close up of the inside of this little UBEC. And you see the red and black wires come across this little orange capacitor here, a tan coloured capacitor. And when I metered the circuit, I found that you can see it's supposed to, there's a wire comes up from the bottom here. I can get these other wires out of the way so you can see. There's a wire comes up from the bottom there, silvery wire under there, joining this top board to the bottom board, and that carries the 5 volt output of the UBEC. This little capacitor here is just there to smooth out the, the voltage because a switching regulator puts a lot of noise on the output. So I metered it and there was no connection between this capacitor and the board underneath. So the positive voltage was getting through. And when I pulled on this wire, I found, oh, look at this. If I can get the camera in here, and I fly, you can see that the capacitor there isn't soldered to the board, and neither is the red wire, which is why there's no output from this UBEC. So now I'll solder that wire back on and we'll test it again. Right now we're going to get some better pictures because I've been playing around with the camera and I've got it on the tele macro setting which should make a big difference now, hopefully so. It uh, doesn't seem to be focusing any better but one thing I noticed, I've soldered that wire back on there. As you can see I hope, soldered the wire back on. But one thing I noticed was there's actually two boards and the two boards are identical. This is actually two UBEX soldered together in parallel. I mean I'll pull it apart and have a look, but everything that's on the top board is also on the bottom board. Let's take a closer look at this little UBEC from Hobby King and see what they've done. It's rather interesting. Now I've taken off the aluminium foil so we can get a better look at the board and we can see it's typical of a switching 
UBEC. We've got a big pot core there, which is actually like a transformer. It's an inductor that is used to step up the voltage or step down the voltage, smooth it out a little bit. It causes the switching regulator to pulse, which is part of the pulsing circuitry. And as soon as I can find a pen to point things out with. Um, and then down here, where am I? I've got to find the right place. Down here we've got a little chip and that does all the hard work. That does all the switching backwards and forwards. There's a capacitor to smooth stuff out. Capacitors on the input just to smooth. And there's a few other little passive components in there, but there's not an awful lot. But if you look carefully, look at this down below. There's the same circuitry as we've got on the top. Turn around the other way. There's another one of those inductors there. This is, really is just two identical UBEX soldered together. How neat is that? Um, I guess that's done to improve the current handling, but I guess it means also that if you want a UBEX with a lower current, you can dis just solder those or rip those apart and you've got two UBEX for the price of one. Now this one's rated at 5 amps, so I guess each of those UBEX is probably good for 2.5 amps. So for a very small application or for your electronic circuits, then you can rip those apart and use them individually. Now the joint where they've soldered them together, she's a bit bodge mate. I mean look at the angles and everything on here. This is this is a bit chronic. Um, and look at the horrible soldering. No wonder I had to resolder their capacitor. I mean this is pretty you know obviously the little Chinese ladies with their man hands can't handle this too well. All the rest of it's automated but actually soldering the boards together it looks like it's done by hand by midgets with sledgehammers or blow torches or something. It's pretty rough but hey I mean, these are really, really cheap devices. You can't complain too much because they don't cost a lot of money. And, uh, yeah, actually, I'm quite happy that I can get two UBEX out of one for some of the applications. And there's the little label, so you know what we're looking at. This is the Hobby King UBEX 5 volts, 5 amps, made in China. Obviously made in China. So there you go. What's inside a Hobby King UBEX?